Hey, what's up everyone? So in this problem, we're gonna do uh, an induction proof, okay? We're gonna prove uh, this for all n greater than or equal to one. So we're gonna do it using the uh, principle of mathematical induction, so let's do it. So proof. So whenever you're using the principle of mathematical induction, it's really good to identify your statement. So this thing here, I'm gonna box it in, right? This is gonna be our S sub n. This is our statement, right? This entire thing here. Uh, and we have to prove this is true for all integers n greater than or equal to uh, one. So I like to do my induction proofs uh, in steps. Like first you have a base case. So we'll start with the base case. So base case. All right, good stuff. So the base case starts at the smallest positive integer that you're trying to prove your statement for. So in this case, that would be one, right? So to show that S sub n is true when n is equal to one. So let's work out this first. So the left-hand side, I love using this notation, <laughs> LHS, right? So you replace the n with one. This is equal to the finite sum as i runs from one to one, right? Being totally pedantic, i, i factorial. And basically means you plug in one, so you get one, one factorial. One factorial is one, so you just get one times one, so you just get one, piece of cake. The right-hand side, right hand side is one plus one, right? So it'd be one plus one factorial, right? Uh, minus one, so minus one. Uh, so that's two factorial, minus one. So that's two minus one, so that's one. So the left hand side is equal to the right hand side. So the statement is true and n is equal to one. So S sub one is true. Good stuff. That takes care of the base case, piece of cake. Now we get to write down the induction hypothesis. Basically, all we do is we suppose our statement is true when n is equal to k. So we just basically write this down and plug in a k and say it's true. So the induction hypothesis, right? We get to say that this is true when n is equal to some k. So suppose, suppose that we have this finite sum as i runs from 1 to k, k of i times i factorial equal to k plus one factorial minus one. So we get to assume this is true. All right, so now we have to show that it's true when n is equal to k plus one. Oh, oh and this is for some k. So for some k greater than or equal to one, right? You're, suppo you're supposed to write that, right? You're supposed to write that. All right, let's do our induction step now. So our induction step is gonna put is to save room is it to show that this is true when n is equal to k plus one. So claim, claim that this statement, so the sum from i equals one to k plus one, I hope this works out. Uh, this is i, i factorial equals k plus one, plus one is k plus two. So we have to show this is a k plus two here, minus one. So to show this is true. All right, this is the claim. It's not part of the proof. It's what we have to show. It's a really good idea to write down what you're trying to show because that way you can do the problem, right? You, you can't um, do it unless you know what you're trying to do. Okay, so let's just try to do it the most obvious way possible. We'll start with this and we'll somehow show it's equal to this. So I'm gonna start by writing this down. The finite sum as i runs from one to k plus one of i, i factorial, okay? And the natural thing to do is to try to somehow involve this, right? So in any induction proof, you always have to involve your induction hypothesis. You should always use it. That's like the key step in the entire proof. If you manage to use it and you get like to the right result, you probably did it right, okay? Um, so this is the sum from one to k plus one. So a typical thing that you do with sums is you break it up. So you go from one to k, okay? And then you add the last piece on, right? So this is the sum from one all the way to k plus one. This is the sum from one all the way to k plus, let's add that last piece. So we'll plug in k plus one for that last piece of the sum, for that last term. It'd be k plus one, k plus one factorial, okay? So again, this is the same as this. So here we go from one to k plus one, here we go from one to k, and there's the k plus one term. That's, that's what that is there. Now we can use our induction hypothesis to replace this. It's up here, right? So I'm just gonna put this here. This is equal to k plus one factorial minus one. And then here we still have plus k plus one, k plus one factorial. All right, let me pause here, okay? So all we did in this step is we replaced uh, this, right? 
with, with this. So we, we're here. And what are we trying to do? Let's see. We're trying to show uh, that this is true. Right? We're trying to get this. K plus 2 factorial minus 1. And so we're here. So you'll notice that k plus 1 times k plus 1 factorial is k plus 2 factorial, right? It's the same thing. Uh, however, there is another k plus 1 factorial here, right? Um, so I think what we should probably do in this case is pull out a k plus 1 factorial, right? So let's try that. So I'm going to factor out k plus 1 factorial. Okay, I'm going to use a bracket here for added clarity. I'm trying to be really careful. So I'm going to put a 1 here, okay? Then here we're going to be left with the k plus 1. Okay, going really slow. And what about this one here? This, I'm going to put it at the end here, okay? I make sure I did that right. I haven't gone through all the details of this problem on purpose because I feel like it's better if I show you how to do a problem like as I figure it out because that, that's how you learn, right? That's how you become good. So, so this here, uh, this here pulled out the k plus 1 factorial. So you got a 1, okay, and then k plus 1, and then this one goes over here. Okay, looks like we're good. Aha, so now this is k plus 1 factorial, k plus 2. I misspoke, by the way. I think I said something wrong. I said that this was k plus, one, uh, k plus 2 factorial. It's not. If that was a k plus 2, then it becomes k plus 2 factorial, right? Th this will be k plus 2 factorial. This is k plus 2 factorial minus 1, right? If you have... Uh, um, n factorial is n, n minus 1, dot, 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 ah, dot, 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 times 1, right? So if you have like uh, n plus 1 factorial, that would be n plus 1, n, n minus 1, 1. So, so um, this is actually n plus 1, n factorial. So n plus 1 factorial is n plus 1, n factorial. So the same thing happens here, right? When you have k plus 1 factorial and you multiply by the next term, k plus 2, you get k plus 2 factorial, okay? It's just something from, from factorials that you can do, that you need. You need this for the problem, right? So, again, if you have uh, n plus 1 factorial, that's n plus 1 times n factorial. If you have k plus 2 factorial, that's k plus 2 times k plus 1 factorial. Okay, so we showed it's true, right? So s sub k plus 1 is true. So s sub k plus 1 is true. So, therefore, by PMI, by PMI... No, we are done, right? The statement is true for all positive integers n greater than or equal to 1. I'll say done. Yeah, yeah, you're supposed to say it, right? For all n greater than or equal to 1, we have proven it by the principle of, uh, yeah, math induction. Good stuff. So, interesting problem, right? Interesting problem. Um, yeah, that's it. Take care.